Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Vacation Bible School, night number two, uh, lesson number two. Uh, it's me, Brother Wesley, uh, teaching the teen and adult class. Um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn them to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Um, the tonight's lesson is entitled, God Almighty. God Almighty. There are three things we're going to learn about God uh, this evening. Um, the first thing is God is omniscient. The second one is God is omnipresent. And the next one is uh, God is omnipotent. Omnipotent. Uh, there you go. Sorry for those weird words. It's uh, a little bit of tongue twister, uh, but you know we'll get through it tonight. Uh, so, if your Bibles to Psalms 139, the first thing we're going to learn is God is omniscient. God is omniscient. Um, Psalms 139 verses 1 through 6 says this: Lord, thou hast searched me and known me; thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Verse 3. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Verse 4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Verse 5. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and lay thine hand upon me. Verse 6. Such is knowledge too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Uh, we're going to pray. Um, that we can go ahead and get started. Uh, let's pray. Don't we, Father? Thank you for signing on us, Lord. Thank you for uh, just everyone who is here um, on this lesson this evening. I pray to bless them, Lord, and I pray that they'll be able to um, listen and apply your word. Uh, I pray for everything that's going on in our country right now, Lord, with COVID-19, uh, with all the social issues and the, um, all the stuff going on with our politics and the election coming up soon, Lord. We pray that you'll have your will and your way um, in everything that's going on. And uh, bless tonight, Lord, and we love you. You hear me pray. Amen. All right, guys. First lesson is God is omniscient. God is omniscient. Or in other words, God is all-knowing. King David here is writing in Psalm 139. Um, he says in the first verse, uh, 139 verse 1, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast searched me and known me. So right off the bat, God, uh, David is saying, God, Lord, you know who the person I am. You, you, you know my ways. You, you searched me. You've, you've dug deep. You know all the crevices, all the things about me. Lord, you know me. Now, this hits two, uh, two certain points here. First thing is God knows you personally. Right? God knows you personally. So he knows your likes, your dislikes, your birthday. He knows all this stuff about you, right? But it goes even deeper than that because he searches you and he has known you, which means that he knows you in a more intimate level. How do we know that? Um, it says here in verse number two, Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. So not only does God know you, like he knows what you like and dislike. He knows your favorite birthday. He knows... Um, uh, you mean your favorite food, he knows your favorite color, he knows the hair on top of your head, but he even knows your thoughts. And it says afar off. Um, so that's very intimate. You know, he knows all these things about you that even your parents don't know, your, your uh, brother and sister don't know, maybe if adults are watching, your kids don't know. Um, God knows you. Now look at verse number three. It says, Thou compassest my path and my line down and art acquainted with all my ways. That art acquainted with all my ways. So that goes in a little bit deeper. Not only does he know you, but he knows uh, what you struggle with. He knows the things, maybe it could be your finances, maybe you're a teenager looking for a job, uh, maybe you're struggling with your faith uh, in God, maybe you're struggling with making friends, maybe you're struggling with school and, and all these different things that's going on. Maybe you're just struggling and you're hurting from all the stuff that's going on with the social issue that's going on. God knows that. He understands it. It says here, um, uh, verse 3, Thou compassest my path and my lying down and aren't acquainted with all my ways. Isn't it comforting to know that, you know what, no matter what you're going through, God knows what you're going through. He can, um, he can comfort you. He understands. He can sympathize with you. And he can, he can just help you out in that time. Now look in verse number 4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. He even knows the words coming out of your tongue. Even before you say it, if he knows your thoughts, he knows your tongue, he knows your inner, your inner being, he knows what you're thinking. God knows you. 
in verse number uh, five, but thou hast beset me behind and before. Now, not only does he know you, but he knows things that's going on in your life. He knows what you have been through in the past. He knows what you are going through now, and he knows what will be happening in the future. It says here, verse five, that thou hast beset me behind the past and before in the future and lay thine hand upon me. That means God is with you. He knows what you've done in the past, and he knows what you're going to be doing right now. He knows what you're doing in the future, and his hand is upon you. And that was in verse, um, verse 5. In verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. So first of all, God knows, uh, God knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows all these events that's going on in your life in the past, the present, and future. Um, next thing to know is this. Um, God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. Look in verse 7 through 12. It says this, Whither shall I go from my spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Verse 9, If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Uh, verse 11, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Verse 12, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as a day, and the darkness and light are both alike to thee. God is omnipresent. I mean, he is everywhere. There is no place that you can go where God is not there. Um, it's a, a couple examples already in the, in the verses we read. It says here, um, Whither shall I go from my, from my spirit? Or where can I hide from th thy presence? Where can I go that God is not there? Um, it says here, even if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I die and if, if I'm in hell, uh, you're still there. Um, then it says here, uh, if, he, if he go, it takes the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, God is still there. I can't help but think of Jonah when he was swallowed by the whale. You know, he was a man who was a prophet from God and he, you know, God gave him uh, direction to go to preach to Nineveh, but Jonah went the other way and he went on a boat and went the opposite way where God wanted him to go. And yet he ended up being tossed into the ocean, a swallowed by a whale, went to the very bottom of the sea, right exactly like this word says. It says here, um, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea. And verse 10 says this, even there shall thy hand lead me. Even for Jonah, just because he was at the very bottom of the sea, in the bottom of a whale, in the belly of a whale, God was still with him. God was still there. Um, it says here, um, Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Verse 11, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and um, cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Verse 12, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. So even if you want, try to look for a place to hide from God, um, when it's dark, and um, this example is kind of like playing hide and seek. Well, for my example, it's playing hide and go seek, right? You try to hide from someone, and um, you know the, the seeker is trying to like look everywhere for you, but they can't find you. But the thing is with God, there's no hiding from God. He knows where you are. He knows where you're hiding. Verse 12, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as day. So to God, even if you're in the, in the darkest part of the world, it still shined as day. The darkness and light are both alike to thee. So there is no place that God cannot be. God is not restricted to location. He is not restricted to four walls and a roof. Uh, God is not restricted to your church building. God is not restricted to um, the place where you pray. Um, God is not restricted to anything. He's not restricted by physical boundaries. God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. The next thing we're going to learn here is in the Psalms 139, 13 through 16. It is God is omnipotent. Omnipotent. It means he is all-powerful. Uh, we kind of went over this um, in yesterday's lesson, if you were there. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and read it. Psalms uh, 139, verse 13, and, uh, 13 through 16. It says this, For thou hast possessed my reins. 
Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Right there. 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right. Well, verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in uh, continuance were fashioned, which as yet there was none of them. So we see here another um, uh, display of God's power. They, David is saying that, God, you created me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You made everything in this world. You are the creator. You are all powerful. There's nothing you can't do. Nothing is impossible with God. There's no limits to God. Um, a, a few things here on, on my notes here. It says here, because he holds the power of the creator, God has power over nature. We see that where God calms a storm in, in the New Testament. Uh, God has power over sickness, where Jesus Christ would heal people um, while he was here on earth. Um, he has power over demons, where he cast out uh, demons who are possessed, uh, people who are possessed by demons. Um, and he has death, his power over death. He raised up, Jesus Christ raised up Lazarus from the dead. Uh, Jesus Christ rose up from that himself. So he has power over death. Um, and here we see in Psalms 139, he has the power to create something from nothing, an act only God can accomplish. Just like that example of, of being in the garage and um, you know me just hoping and praying that, oh, maybe if one day a Tesla can pop out of my garage and how awesome that would be for a Tesla to pop out of nothing. Um, but we found by logic that that's impossible. You know, something as intricate as a Tesla cannot just appear out of nothing. How much more can we, as human beings, come out of nothing? How can we say that um, a Big Bang Theory happened and, you know, it was all by chance? No, it's not by chance. God created us. Uh, David says in Psalm 139, let me read it to you. It says here, verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. God created you with a purpose, a plan. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. You have a purpose, a plan for your life. The only way you can find that is to keep on following God, to know God. How do you know God? Go to church, read your Bible, pray, and obey what the Bible says. And as you do that day by day by day, God will slowly lead you and open doors to his plan and will for your life. So we see here, God's um, omnipotent. He's all-powerful. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. And uh, last, and the first thing we went over is God is omniscient. He knows everything. So how can we apply that to you? How can we apply this in our life? We can apply God's omniscience to the point where we are sinners. You know, we do things that um, offend God. It's called sin, where we, we break his law, you know, daily. You know, every hour we, we sin, every minute we sin. You know, we, we're just people of sinners. And yet, you know what? God, who is all-knowing, who knows you, he knows the thoughts before you even think it. He knows you personally on a more intimate level. He knows the words coming out of your mouth before you can even say it. God, who is all-knowing, he knows what you've done in the past. He knows what you were doing now. He knows what you will be doing in the future, whether it be good or bad, sin or service to other people god knows all that and with god knowing that he still died on the cross for you he still loved you enough to pay the to, to pay the, the price for our sin by sending jesus christ to die on the cross for our sin how, how is he able to do that because he's um, um, uh, omnip omnipotent sorry omnipotent he's all powerful and that he was able to send jesus christ a man who was 100 percent god 100% man to die on the cross for our sin, to pay our sin debt, to pay our consequence for sin, for the bad things we do, so that one day we can go to heaven. And that's the lesson for today. Just for us to um, acknowledge God is all-knowing. He knows who you are. He knows who I am. He knows the things that I've done. He knows the things I'm doing. He knows the things that I will do in the future. He knows the things that you've done, your experiences. He knows the things that you're doing now whether they're good or bad. He knows what you're going to be doing in the future, whether they be good or bad. Yet he loved you enough to die on the cross for you. 
so that one day when you die, you won't go to hell. And he is able to do that because he is omnipotent. He's all powerful. And once you become saved, you get to experience God's omnipresence because he says, you know what? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That means wherever you go, God goes. Wherever you go, he's right there with you. He's only a prayer away. How about you today? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your savior? If you have not, here's how you do it. First, you have to realize that you're a sinner. Realize that there's no way you can go to heaven. That because of your sin, you're, you're supposed to pay the consequence. Just like if someone were to kill someone, um, they're supposed to go to jail or they're supposed to do the death penalty. But anyways, there's a consequence for what they did. Same thing for us. There's a consequence for our sin, and that is called death, or that is called hell. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has given you a gift of eternal life, and that is through Jesus. What did Jesus Christ do? How? Why is it through Jesus? Because he died on the cross for you. And if we call upon him with faith, knowing that he is the only way to heaven, then we can be saved from our sin and not go to a place of hell. If we have faith that Jesus Christ paid the, cross, paid the price for our sin, then we are saved and we can go to heaven. If you have not done that, I encourage you um, to contact a church. Um, you know, find a way to contact us, find your, you know, maybe your own church or uh, maybe just uh, read the Bible more, pray, and, and, and we can definitely help you out with that. And with that being said, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I pray that this lesson was of value to you and a reminder of, of God's omniscience, that he knows where you are, who you are, what you're doing, what you're going to do, of his omnipresence, that he's everywhere. He's not limited to um, to physical boundaries. And lastly, his, his um, om, om, omnipotent, omnipotence. He's all-powerful. And we can have that if we have faith in God. We can experience that if we have faith in God. But it all starts off with salvation. Hopefully you can do that today. Thanks for joining me this evening. Um, and uh, please be on the lookout for tomorrow tomorrow night's session. And I pray all of you will be well and be safe. And y'all take care. Bye.